turning right or left. Now then, welcome to the video. Well, it's been an exciting couple of weeks here on Narrowboat Laura. We are invited on to a life full of meanings, narrowboat stories bit on a Friday morning. It was a live stream. Quite exciting for us both actually. We have been big fans of theirs for a number of years and we were bowled over when they asked us on. Anyway, there is a link in the description box below if you want to have a look at that. Well from that I got invited on to the engine chat room live stream with Glenn and the gang and it was quite an informative and an enjoyable experience for me as well. I've put the link for that in the description box as well. Now from all this exposure and my dazzling personality we've reached 500 subscribers. We're very honoured and grateful to all you watchers, likers and subscribers. We've especially loved reading all your comments and as I've not offended anyone yet they've all been quite nice. If you've got out to say, you've got any questions or a request for something you want to say on the channel stick it in the comment box wherever YouTube's put it this week and I'll do my very best to get back to you. So we finally made it onto the Lancaster Canal. 20 odd days of cruising, the ups, the downs, the locks, the bridges, the navigation and a river. Tanguan Bruiser managed to pee on every single blade of grass from Wilt Marina all the way to the end of the Ribble Navigation and we met some smashing people on the way. What's in store for us all now? Well today we're going to show you what happened when we got onto the Lancaster Canal. Let's have a look at where we went. There we are, we're using the trusty pointy screwdriver pencil this week again. Our travels began here just off the Ribble Navigation. The canal is quite rural here but there are signs of urbanisation. We moored here just before the M55 bridge for a spot of dinner and then set off after that through Catforth, a sleepy little village and you wouldn't think you're near the city of Preston. The next stop is Billsborough. There's old Nell's nearby, a cracking pub and a nice place to visit. We stopped here to use the facilities and just past this is Barton Grange Marina. We raced on through towards Garstang. We uh, pulled over and went to the local shops to get supplies for our tea and then we set off again. It was starting to get dark now we were looking for a decent mooring. And here is that decent mooring just after Bridge 71, Wind Marley Bridge. We stopped here for the night, it was quite a nice spot actually. And the next day Debbie moved the boat through some lovely countryside all the way to just outside Golgot and the Glasson branch. She waited there for me to finish work and then we set off through the locks all the way down to the Glasson Basin where we moored in the dark and we stopped for two weeks. Well, I think we better crack on. We on the left, we're heading north. Debbie got all excited. Yeah. 
There's lots of duckweed on the canal this year due to lack of movement during lockdown. It's not a problem, it won't bind up on the prop. Where are we going to? Anyone want a boat? One careless, I mean careful owner. It's okay, we were expecting this. We ran out of fuel. So I need the plank, uh, the, uh, the, the big long stick. Just so I can. Thanking you. Debbie held us off the side while I sorted some pipes. She did a grand job. Make a good gondolier driver, she would. There we go, she's back to life. That skip is a mechanical genius. Cracky, that duckweed is like a carpet. Bridge 17 here, Cotton Hall Bridge, probably named after Cotton Hall. That looks like a cracking place to moor. Up ahead is Bridge 18, Lee Malt Kiln Bridge. So cool because Lee had a malt kiln nearby, maybe. Or I might have just made that up. It's set up. So we, uh, we've got a 25 gallon uh, um, tank thing. Um, so, the, you know, it, Fed bridge, straight off that. bridge 19, Quaker's Bridge. I think they make porridge nearby. Alright, I'll stop. I'm starting to worry that we missed a turn somewhere. Looks like a farmer's dike here. Oh look, a new bridge being built here. That's the new road. wonder what this bridge will be called. They've already cast the legs on that side.
This is not bridge 20, it's 21. What happened to bridge 20? It's not even on the map. But loads of dogs have tried in on that canal. It's like grass. Finally, some moorings. Let me spot this. This boat looks a little worse for wear. Word is from the grapevine, this was a new boat that had set on fire crossing the Ribble Link. It went up like a candle. Very sad for the owners. This morning after Bridge 26 is for the Hand and Dagger pub. Up ahead is the M55 bridge. We moored here for a bite and a brew. The weather got a bit drippy after the break. Got a few photos and videos though. Is it me or are the aqueducts on the Lanky more rustic looking than other places on the network? Funny the things you see on the canal. Not a clue what you would need that for. This was up for sale in September 2020. Don't know how much or if it's even sold now. This is a lovely area to moor. The town of Garstang is near here with shops, bars and an outdoor market. It was late in the evening when we moored, just after Bridge 41. We only stayed the night here. Next day, at the crack of early afternoon, Debbie moved the boat to the beginning of the Glasson Branch flight of locks at Golgate. That's a cracking little boat. We like the quirky ones. I wasn't on this cruise. I was at work all day. Debbie was at the helm, which was her first time driving the boat on her own. This bit of the lanky is so pretty. It's leafy as well. I'm looking forward to seeing this bit one day. Although it looks quite rural, the M6 and A6 are never far away. This is a particularly lovely stretch near Junction 35 or 34 of the M6. One of them, the village of Golgate is just up the way. Just past this bridge is the loveliest of mooring spots. We spent two weeks there just before Christmas. It's a private road to a lovely house. Here's the turn for the Glasson Branch. It's an interesting flight of locks and a bit underused. I can do a more detailed video of the locks in the future. It wasn't a too eventful trip down the flight. At one point we forgot to close a paddle. I didn't realise till Debbie had set off ahead to the next one. So I shut the front gates and puddles and left the lock fill up again. At least we didn't drain a pound this time. It was dark when we got into the glass and basin. We had moored for the full two weeks and had a bit of a rest. Well, Debbie managed a couple of days. I was straight back to work. Still, as autumn took hold, we had some lovely days. And it's not just narrow boats on the basin. Glass and Dock is a working port with access to the sea. So there's a few yachts on the marina. Lots of nature too. Well, 
that was a cracking journey and we hope you all enjoyed it. The village of Glasson is a lovely little place and a great place to visit as well. If you want I can do a video about all the goings on in Glasson Dock. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments box. Next time we'll be setting off to Pastures New. Well, Lancaster. Well, to be specific, just before Lancaster. Here's a sneaky peek. Oh, leafy. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you click that little bell icon, YouTube will my there next time we release one. Well, that's everything on my list. I reckon we'll call it a draw for this one. Till next time.